All right, I'm able to do shoulder exercises. What type of elbow movement and exercise ought to be done next? This is great, and I actually have a couple of videos coming out on this. This is not part of the question, but it kind of is part of the question, and I address this in a future video that's coming out on YouTube. I know I talk about this a lot, like shoulder, then elbow, then wrist and hand. Now, I will tell you, I'm someone that's a little dramatic sometimes, like if I feel that my words are being interpreted incorrectly, I try and adjust, and a lot of times I overcorrect. And so I was getting a lot of questions about hand movement, and then I was seeing people in person that really were focused on their hand, and they had no shoulder or elbow movement. And so my my overemphasis on shoulder and elbow, yes, it is true that shoulder and elbow usually do come back first and then wrist and hand. One potential reason I probably overemphasize that you should really focus on the shoulder and elbow was really for those people that all they were doing was focusing on the hand and the wrist and not addressing the shoulder and the elbow. And my argument or my uh, internal struggle with that approach that someone is taking is that you're going to get your hand back and that's great. But if you can't get your hand to anything because you can't move your shoulder and elbow, then what good is it? And so that's why I started to emphasize this how recovery actually happens. And I might have overemphasized that to the point where people think that you should not work on your hand until you get the shoulder and elbow back. I think all are essential. I just think in the early stages, you should probably prioritize shoulder and elbow and maybe do a little bit of hand, but really prioritize shoulder and elbow because they are going to come back first. And then kind of once you get shoulder and elbow, then you can go all in on the hand versus what I normally see, which is people are going all in on the hand because they just want to be able to be independent, grab that brush, open that jar, hold that cup. And so I was trying to veer those people away. So that's a total tangent, but you don't want to not work on the hand at all until you have shoulder and you don't want to totally neglect the elbow until you have shoulder. You should probably be working on all of them. Just know that shoulder should probably be prioritized with a little bit less effort to the wrist, the elbow, and probably a little bit less effort to the wrist and the hand early on, but they all should be addressed. And if you have three hours a day, if I had my ideal world, it'd be an hour on the shoulder, hour on the elbow, hour on the wrist and hand, if I were being honest with you. But I know people don't, and so that's why I say to prioritize the shoulder and the elbow early on. But um, now this is for someone that has shoulder um, movement, and now wants to work on elbow movement. And I would say weight bearing and weight bearing. If I had to give someone one exercise to address for the elbow, it would be weight bearing, putting weight down through the hand. Now, what does that do? We have like what we call reactive responses that are just kind of built into our brain. They're in us from birth and then they just kind of emerge. The best way I can describe this is a baby that can't walk, but if you put them vertical and you put pressure down through their feet, what do their feet do? What do their legs do? Their legs extend. It is built into our system. So weight bearing, especially for those of you where your arm is starting to develop, to develop some tone and flex up, weight bearing, we're trying to tap into some of those like kind of reactive responses. Weight bearing with a little bit of a lean onto an arm, well now your arm is gonna be even more, uh, potentially is gonna be more likely to extend because now it's trying to prevent you from falling. So if I had to give one exercise, I would say weight bearing elbow extension. Now from that point, it becomes a little bit nuanced and it just depends on what is your elbow doing primarily. If it's primarily flexing up all of the time, then you would want to emphasize anything where you're extending the arm, straightening the arm out. And now if you guys have been following for me for a while, you know, I always like to start with gravity eliminated just because that's the easiest. So if, if you watch the videos on YouTube, that skate video that I did, 
the, the little DIY, DIY tool that I made, I did an exercise in there where I was laying on my side and I was working elbow extension like this. That's gravity eliminated. That's what I would start with. Most people need to work on elbow extension. The reason is, is because the most common area that becomes like spastic are in the muscles that flex the arm. The only, the best way to minimize the effects of spasticity. So spasticity is usually the result of damage to a motor area of the brain so my logic tells me that if you can get mo more motor input from the motor areas of the brain to the arm it's going to minimize spasticity so the motor area it, in my best guess well in common sense would tell me the motor area that's going to have the greatest impact on involuntary bending up of the elbow is isolated elbow extension. So I'd say if you're someone that's just looking for an elbow exercise and when you're at rest or when you're walking your arm involuntarily bends up, I would prioritize elbow extension. Now there are some of you out there where your arm always locks out when you walk, and I have worked with people, it's less common, it's a little bit more rare, but if your arm is always locking out straight, then you would wanna work on elbow flexion. And same thing, you can do gravity eliminated the same way, just pulling the arm in. You wanna go parallel to the ground, that's gravity eliminated, same thing. Anything where you're working uh, elbow bending. Now, that's kind of a brief explanation. Stay tuned because in a few weeks I do have a video coming out where I break that down even more. So I go into more depth as to synergy patterns, spasticity, things like that. And um, it would probably take me way too long during today's session to go into all the nuance that's involved, whether you have an extensor synergy pattern or flexor synergy pattern and which one, which, what are the best exercises given your impairments that are related to the stroke that you had and the size and the severity and all of that. There is a little bit more nuance to that, but I will go into all of that. But big picture, if your arm's always locking out, you want to work on elbow flexion. If your arm has a tendency to always bend up involuntarily, then I would emphasize extension but overarching I would emphasize weight bearing whether you have a flexor synergy pattern or an extensor synergy pattern again we're tapping into those uh, kind of reactive responses that are kind of hardwired into our brain if you liked that video and you want to learn more exercises on how to improve your walking definitely check out this video over here or that video over there if you want even more help out our gold membership program where you'll get access to over 300 exercises that are not here on YouTube, as well as access to our monthly lives where you can get your questions answered.